Jericho took advantage of him and beat the piss out of Naito in their first match. Right. This time, Naito came to the ring first and got all of his stuff off very quickly. Jericho comes down the ring. Jericho's taking his time. Naito attacks him first. Yep. So there's a complete contrast in stories. And then, and then once again, Jericho steals the camera. <laughs> Did you see that part? Yeah. And what'd he do? Finger. He did. He grabbed the camera, which which Don Callis said was like forty thousand dollars, and he he put it on Naito and he flipped him off right on camera, it's just hysterical. being the just being the badass Jericho that he is. And, uh, and then we had we had some really hard hitting spots here. Jericho just just forgets how to age. He has no idea what age is anymore. Puts on a fantastic match. Now this one went for twenty two minutes and thirty five seconds. Yeah. That was so wonderful. this, it was wonderful. It was a fantastic match. This was probably my third favorite on the show, but it it, it was fantastic. Definitely go out of your way to see this one. You would say so too. Oh my god, yeah. I think it was probably uh, my second favorite. So now we have the main event. The main event of Wrestle Kingdom thirteen was the champion, the best wrestler on planet Earth, in my opinion, and Lynn's opinion. And probably a lot of other people's opinions. Kenny Omega. That Kenny guy. That Kenny guy. <laughs> that Kenny guy. Oh, and I almost passed. Oh, uh, what happened with that? What was the tweet? Um, okay. So she was just like, she was just like, I guess, trolling, like just trying to like mess with people. Cause I was reading in the comments later, she's like, oh, it's like the AJ tweet all over again. So mm-hmm. she did it about AJ Styles too. But she, this girl, um, she tweeted, you know, if that Kenny guy comes to WWE, <laughs> is anybody in the building going to know? And people literally were commenting underneath, like, yeah, no. Are you fucking kidding and me? And I'm like, wow, so every fucking retard then. This is great. Everybody watches watches WWE and WWE only, which is, I mean, I get it. But if you have any social media at all, you, you know, know who Kenny Omega is. <laughs> you know who Kenny Omega is. You know who he is. My sister knows who he is. And she doesn't even watch. Well. She doesn't watch WWE that much. Right. She doesn't watch New Japan at all. No. I made her watch an episode of Being the Elite, though. Mm. (laughs) Whoops. I made her. And she knew, she knows, she knew who Kenny was. She knew. Like, I don't understand. If you like wrestling, how could you? Oh, my God. No, I have Okay. Yeah, you're, you're getting flustered. So it was Kenny Omega versus the ace of New Japan, the legend himself, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth before this match talking about how Kenny doesn't like what Hiroshi Tanahashi stands for because he stands for the past. He stands for, uh, you know, like slow old men. Like he was really getting at his age. He was getting at the fact that he just couldn't keep up anymore. And that Kenny was the future. There's a reason that New Japan's as big as it is now. And no one can debate that. Right. Hiroshi, Hiroshi Tanahashi, what a lot of people are saying, now I did not watch during the so-called dark ages of New Japan. But just like the mid-90s for WWE, there was a lull. There was a time where it wasn't very popular. And, you know, the top star when it wasn't very popular in WWE was, you know, Bret Hart. Right. And I guess the top star in New Japan during their lull or their their low period was Hiroshi Tanahashi. He was the guy. So this match was basically the past versus the present. And this was incredible. Yeah. Linz, this match was unreal. The table spot. Dude. Dude, you retweeted it. And I... I, I, I saw that before I saw the show because I saw you you were re, you, you retweeted that. Basically, Tanahashi sets up a table. I uh, know Kenny sets up a table on the outside. Yep. And they end up fighting. Tanahashi lays Kenny on the table. Tanahashi gets to the top rope. Now remember, Kenny's on the floor. He's not in the ring. Tanahashi jumps up. He doesn't fall. He jumps up to do his high fly flow or a frog splash for anyone who doesn't know what the high fly flow is. And Kenny moves, and he goes stomach first through the table onto the padding. Yeah. And he's old. And I watched this. I was like, oh, my God. Is he alive? Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> Linz, we had some, 
some incredibly hard-hitting V-triggers in this match. You had a reverse Rana from from Tanahashi onto Omega, which yeah. is just is, is wild because of his age, but he showed up in shape. It was This one had a big fight feel to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this match went for 39 minutes and 14 seconds. Did it really? 39 minutes and 14 seconds was the length of this match. It didn't feel like it. No, because how invested we were. Yeah. It was it was awesome. It was something really really cool to see. It's always great when a main event delivers. Yeah. So, Lynn's the reason that I was naming the times. Now, what would you say are the top 3 matches on this show? Your fa- your favorite 3 and the best 3, which are the same. Okay, so Obviously, the main event, mm-hmm. Jericho and Naito. Yep. And, um, oh, my God, the first match. Osprey and Ibushi. Yes. Those were also the three longest matches on the show. Huh. Those were the three longest matches on the show with Omega and Tanahashi going almost 40, Naito and Jericho going 23, and Osprey and Ibushi going 19. And you had something to say after the show. And it was, you don't think that they gave them the time they should have. No, it felt very, if, okay. So if I have to compare it to anything, it just feels like a WWE. And only, only before anybody loses their shit, only in the sense of the matches seemed rushed. Yes. And I don't care if they're like, well, they're trying to cut down on the time. Like, okay, that's. But you don't go from literally what? Like an average match is like 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. And now you're dropping it down to nine. No, if you're going to do that, you slowly make them shorter. You don't just go, here's a, here's an hour match with Kenny Omega. And then now let's cut him down to 40 minutes. It's a long time, granted. Like that's a long mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. But he always does matches longer than that. There's there's literally one point to shut down everyone that has any that that bitches about uh, that they had to cut down. One of the greatest pay per views of 2018, in my opinion, was Dominion. Yes. What was the main event of Dominion? It was a two out of three falls match between Kenny and Okada that went 70 minutes. Yep. It went over an hour, and that whole show was good. Maybe it was yep. because they didn't have as many matches. Maybe. But you had, you had, let's see, you had nine matches on the main card for this show. Yep. One of them went, didn't even go seven minutes. One of them didn't even reach 10 minutes. Uh, three of them were just at 10 minutes. One of them was at 15. One of them was at 19. One of them was at 23. And then you had the main event, which was 40. Now, a lot of people remember Wrestle Kingdom 11 for being one of the bigger pay-per-views that they've had. Kenny and Okada went 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, like you can make okay. So long story short, did this show meet your expectations? No, no, and no because a lot of the matches felt rushed. Yeah, they a lot of like most of them besides three mm-hmm. felt extremely rushed, and it was just like it's it felt like a lot of the matches were like here, let's just do this one. Like I I wasn't invested in any of them other than the the three that the longest and it wasn't because they were longer mm-hmm. it was because they seemed like they made sense the other ones to me kind of just seemed like all right go out there do this for a couple minutes and then come back yep and it never i i mean i'm not like i don't follow new japan like you do like i'm not that into it but i'm into it. like if there's like one of their big shows i'm watching it yeah i follow them i know what's going on. yeah I just don't, I don't have the, the, I have to use your thing to get onto it. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, I just, you, there was a different feel to this one. And I expected, see, maybe I went in big expectations because of all elite happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just expected bigger things. Did I expect any of them to walk away with the title that we're leaving? No. Mm -mm. But did I expect more? Yeah. I, I, I did, too. So, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 13, it was a good show. Uh, it, it could have been better, is what we're saying. Good show could have been better. So, that was the first half 
of this episode of the rundown. We went over a couple of Royal Rumble rumors. We talked a little bit about Takeover Phoenix that's coming up, and we let you know exactly what we thought about the matches and the show as a whole for Wrestle Kingdom 13. So don't go anywhere. Sit back, relax. We're going to be right back with part two of the Rundown Wrestling Podcast where we go over all elite wrestling. All right, part two. Thanks for sticking around with us, everybody. So for this half of the show, we're going to go over All Elite Wrestling. For those who don't know what All Elite Wrestling is, this is what Being the Elite was leading up to. There was a lot of rumors swirling around that the Young Bucks, Cody, Hangman, they were going to make their own wrestling promotion. There were... There were uh, trademarks filed for the name All Elite Wrestling. There was trademarks for like Tuesday Night Dynamite, Double or Nothing, all that stuff. And as we saw in the last Being the Elite of 2018, it's real. Yeah, We're getting All Elite Wrestling. Linz, when you saw that this was legit, were you as ecstatic as I was? God, yeah, I couldn't control myself. <laughs> I was... I was so pumped up for this, but I was also like, fuck, all of my money this year is going to wrestling. Oh, yeah. Well, we already knew that. That's even worse. Oh, my God. Now it's going to be so much worse. They're going to do the pay-per-views, all that shit, and the other thing. <laughs> but um, they also announced that we're getting a second pay-per-view from that crew. I wouldn't even call it All In 2, you know, because I haven't really heard them call it All In 2. But if you'd like, you can call it All In 2. But the name of it is Double or Nothing. I love that. I love I, the name. I love the logo. Yeah. I think the logo is sick. It has the neon sign. It has the poker chips next to it. And the poker chips are significant because Double or Nothing is happening May 25th of 2019 in Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Grand Garden Arena get myself to las vegas Linz, I, for those who who didn't know this last year for all in happened last year and starcade happened i mean starcast happened before all in and starcast that's where like social media personalities got to show up got to do interviews got their own booth stuff like that turnbuckle topics was invited we Ooh. were we were invited to starcast couldn't go the funds weren't there at that time, and our schedules conflicted with it a little bit. Yep. But, Linz, I already got a chance to reach out to uh, to StarCast on Twitter. They haven't answered me yet. Um, but if that's the case, and they're doing the same thing, boots, stuff like that, all access passes, and they want us to come down. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pat ourselves in the back here. We're over 15,000 followers, and we want to go. Why not make a trip out of it? Oh, my God. Shut up. I that feel like would, that would be so cool. Dude, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, it would literally just be me and you because Meg wouldn't be able to go, but... Well, no, it would be Chris. It would be... Well, no, I meant, I meant like, out of us. Yeah. It meant, like, I'm not going to have my security blanket, so... <laughs> oh my god, me, we would go down there, we would go for the show... But then we go to the casino, we get drunk. Go to the strip club. Go to the strip club. Someone would pass out underneath the guitar, the Hard Rock Cafe. Me, me. Uh, yeah, me. or me. I, I, I both of us. Wouldn't give, yeah, we'll both be there. Yep. Like, who the hell are these guys? And why do they have StarCast passes on? None of your fucking business. <laughs> they fight so many people. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyway, uh, so the next show, like we said, all elite, technically the first official all Elite Wrestling Show is happening May 25th, 2019 in Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Linz, that's a legitimate arena. That's where all the UFC stuff happens. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, okay, they know what they're doing. Yes. Like, it's like, I'm not worried about them. Like, that, go ahead, do it. Me neither. I, 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 that's, that was my exact thought. I was, like, I was like, oh, shit, they're doing this from the MGM Arena? Yep. They're they're going for this and it's going to happen. So basically this is what's going down. These are the people that are running All Elite Wrestling and, and these are their titles that they have. So All Elite Wrestling technically was founded on November 5th, 2018, 2 months ago. I guess that's when everything was signed the patent and stuff. 
Uh, the founders of it are Shahid Khan and Tony Khan. Most people know Tony Khan as the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, these are the people that are involved that are on the board as of right now. Tony Khan is the acting president. Cody Rhodes, or Cody, as a lot of people know, he is one of the executive vice presidents. Amazing. Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, they are the other two executive vice presidents. I'm not sure how that works. I'm pretty sure one's going to be in charge of money. The other one's going to be in charge of booking, yada, yada, yada. Don't know the ins and outs, but that's our titles. And then you have the, I'm sorry if I curse here, you have the boss bitch herself, Brandy Rhodes, as the chief brand officer. She's amazing. God. Liz, here's the question. Who is your favorite chief brand officer, Brandy Rhodes or Stephanie McMahon? Oh my God, Brandy! <laughs> she hasn't even done anything yet. Exactly. It, it, which is awesome. But anyway, the owners are the cons, and apparently, the initial investment from the cons uh, into All Elite Wrestling was roughly about one hundred million dollars. That's it, that's oh my God! I could throw up. $100 million. Now, that is for transportation. That is for salaries. That is for pyro. That is for contracts. That is for insurance because they're trying to get health insurance for their wrestlers, which is unheard of. That, that, oh God, it's so – it's amazing. Everything that they seem to be wanting to do seems awesome. Yeah. You know? One thing that really stuck out that really stuck out to me, and I know it stuck out to you if you if you heard it, because I know your alarm didn't go off because you don't sleep or you sleep at weird times during the day. You know what? Mind your business. Mind your goddamn business. So the first female, well, technically the second, but the first talent female to sign with AEW, All Elite Wrestling, Dr. Britt Baker, mm -hmm. who, as we know, that is Adam Cole's girlfriend, but. She's more than that. She is the first woman to sign to AEW. She is a legitimate dentist. And she made it clear that in all elite wrestling, the women get paid the same as the men. That You know what? Brandy actually did a tweet and then she got some like backlash about it. And then she tweeted again. And I read that she said, it's not like, you know, how did she put it? Like, basically, I'll just use WWE terms because it'll be easier. Um, like, the top stars won't be getting paid. The top stars will be getting paid what top stars get paid. And then, like, I guess I would say, like, the mid card, they would be getting, like, it's not like the top male star is going to make the same as the mid card female. Mm -hmm. It's equal across the board. It's the top from both will get paid whatever like the lower like it's just going to be equal on every level yeah I, I got you so basically the people who draw the most money are going to be getting paid roughly the same so if if Britt Breaker draws a shit ton of money and Hangman Page draws a shit ton of money they're going to be getting paid the same yes okay I got I understand completely now so it all it, so, so basically that they're paying based off of performance almost yeah which is awesome, which means it's going to make them work even harder. I can't. Oh, my God, I can't wait. For, for us. Oh. And that's one thing that was very clear in the rally. Um, for those who may have missed the All Elite Wrestling rally in Jacksonville, Florida, Hangman Page came out. He seemed very, very passionate uh, about this. He said that this is his favorite first day on the job he's ever had in his life because we are the bosses meaning everyone that watches it. We are the bosses. We are the ones who get to determine what kind of things they do. Not necessarily the moves in the ring, but you want this show, you got it. You want us to sign this person, you got it. And with the backing that they have, and Linz, over 300,000 people watched that rally on some platform. That's amazing. 300,000 people. And then you know you're going to get the people that are like, huh, AEW, what is this? Yep. 
and then you're going to get more viewers and more viewers and more viewers. Now, we talked about this on the Super Show, um, our, our recent show. Make sure you go back and listen to it. We talked about this on the Super Show, about this becoming competition for WWE. I, I, now, it, we, it's hard to put that into words because WWE is global, billion dollars, crazy yeah. stuff. So you can't really compete with that right away. But if they're doing what they say they're going to do with the money they have, it's going to be really, really, really popular. It is. I, I mean, I think no doubt in my mind that they're going to do great with this. The level WWE great, nobody does that. No, not yet. No, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, hey, if WWE keeps up with the same old, same old, and feeding us. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, if a people lot of are people. really in it for wrestling, for all of that, then they're they're gonna jump. Mm-hmm. They are gonna jump. WWE won't do anything about it because I'm sorry, but the talent already, okay, in yeah. AEW is it's big. It's it, it's. it's I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll go over it. We'll go over it. We're going to go over the signings and then the words are going to pop into your mouth. <laughs> I just feel like the word elite is dead on. Yes. It's, a, it's better. It's quality over quantity. This, that, this is the most elite professional wrestlers from across the world. Yes. Coming to one place. And he doesn't have that. They don't. They have good characters. They have people who are being underused. Now, once again, That's we yep. we still watch WWE. We are not hating on WWE. Do they no. put on bad shows? Yes, they do. That's a fact. But we're just we're talking about all the good that's going to come out of AEW. So the next uh, thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to All Elite Wrestling is they announced a third show. Well, second technically, if you count All In as the first one. They didn't announce where. They didn't announce when. Actually, they did announce where, but they didn't announce when, and they didn't announce the name of it. But after Double or Nothing in in Las Vegas, they're going to be having a show at the Jacksonville Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida. Don't know the name of it. Don't know when it is, but I guess they already have the venue set, and they're already ready. They've been thinking ahead. Yeah. And and, Go ahead. I, I, it just amazes me, like how this came together. I mean, I don't know how long they've been working on it, uh-huh. but it seems like it's all just like boom, 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 boom. They have their shit together. And one of the coolest things as a fan lens is a lot of us were way too young to understand or even give a shit about what happened backstage during the Monday Night Wars. Yeah, we, we were just I and mean, we were just watching because oh, cool, Stone Cold. Yep. Or, or, oh, my God, Hollywood Hogan and, and, and the NWO. Cool. Okay, well, I don't think I ever said that. But Now we get to see exactly how a wrestling company operates. Oh, my God. We know who's, who's backstage. We know what their role is. We know what's going on. We know how to at least keep up with it. Oh, my God. I wonder if they need a makeup artist. That's a good point. I have things to do after this. Yeah. <laughs> I have people to message. Yep. <laughs> you were getting a lot of uh you were getting a lot of makeup love on that selfie you put up today. Oh, I mean, you know. Oh my god, my women crush Wednesday is me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen. Yeah. <laughs> Mind your business. <laughs> Literally. Oh <laughs> all right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna jump into some of the signings. So we had the all elite wrestling rally, uh on on Tuesday, we had the All Elite Wrestling Rally because it was in Jacksonville, right? We're SmackDown Live. Yeah, was. dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, coincidence? No, they planned that. Oh my and god, it was beautiful. <laughs> it's smart that they did. Yeah. Hell, there's gonna be there's gonna be ten thousand wrestling fans in this town on this day. Why the hell not? Yep. See, that's what I'm saying. They're a step ahead, man. They're smart. So. Uh, what happened at the rally? Some of the first people to come out and say that they were officially signed to All Elite Wrestling were SCU, SoCal Uncensored, and that being Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, 
and Scorpio Sky, who's SCU. This is the worst town I've ever been in. My brother loves them, Lens. Really? Loves them. Because, well, number one, he watched uh, Christopher Daniels in TNA back in like 05, and he liked them when he was the Fallen Angel and stuff. But he just loves the saying. He doesn't like, he's not like a big in ring guy with them. He just loves how they say, this is the worst. He loves that. Oh. Like, I, I bought him an SCFNU shirt for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. So, so SCU. Those are three signees there. Obviously, Cody is a signee. He is the executive vice president. He is a producer. He's probably going to be a talent as well. Um, you have Matt. What? I would hope. <laughs> right? What if he just all together just says, nope, I'm only backstage? No, I can't. Nope. No. Nope. Mm-mm. That's good. He's too young. Yeah. <laughs> too young. So uh, next, we have obviously Matt and Nick Jackson, both uh, executive vice presidents, the Young Bucks, more than likely going to be talent as well. Kill them all if they're not. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a murderous mood. I am. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what that means you get tired then you just want to kill stuff i mean hey that's why i play fortnite a lot <laughs> that is true <laughs> so so make sure you add her not like she already has 35 ads on on uh on dude fortnite. i do oh my god <laughs> so anyway let's keep rolling here let's not get off track yeah. um so scu signed and then uh, I'm going to save the good ones for the end. But then Matt and Nick Jackson and the Young Bucks, they said that they signed superstars from Japan. I mean, not Japan, China. Now, when he said Chinese, I was like, well, what the hell? Who's he talking about? I do not know who these people are, but I will name their names. So don't, I don't know anything about them. A uh, person named Sima, C-I-M-A. person named L. Lindemann. person named... Uh, Takahiro Yakamura and T Hawk, T Hawk, like the bird. Huh. So, those are some of the signings that I have no idea who they are. Yeah, never heard of them. But then it really started to get cool. You had MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, come out and just verbally assault Conrad Thompson. Yeah. Well, Lynn, did you hear what he was saying? Yeah, I caught caught clips of it. He's like, yeah, go ahead. Waddle off stage there, penguin tits. I I, I was like, what? (laughs) That's my new favorite line. He was saying saying some mean, mean stuff. But MJF was in the opening match of All In against Matt Cross. And Cody has said numerous times that he is the heel of the future. And I believe it 100%. Oh, yeah. I I think he's going to be an, an incredible asset. But MJF gets hit in the back by a crutch. And who is swinging the crutch but Joey Janela. Bad boy Joey Janela who had the Chicago Street Fight match against Hangman Page at All In. Yep. And Penelope Ford was with him. Yay. The thing is, Linz, I don't know if you saw this. Joey Janela, because he's hurt, he was going through like a, de- like a de- depressed stage. And he said publicly that him that his real life relationship with Penelope Ford was over. Oh, it's like recent too. Oh, yeah. So when she showed up with him, that's when everyone was like, "Oh shit!" Like, are they back together? Or are they not? Who knows? But who gives a fuck? They're both there. Yep, basically. So now we have MJF signed. We have Joey Janela signed. Out walks Hank. Now this is where it starts to get good. Out walks Hangman Page. Now, Cody has also described Hangman Page as the future of the business. And, Linz, I agree. Oh, God, I love him. I love Hangman Page. Everything that he does is awesome. For his size, he moves like a cruiserweight. Yeah, it's insane. It's so much fun to watch Hangman Page. And he comes out, and he's got passion on the mic. He is loving it. He is loving everything about it. And he makes one statement. He says, my goal for 2019 is to become the first ever AEW champion. And then music hits. Music hits, steam starts to fly, fireworks come out. And out walks fucking Neville, or Pac, as he is now known. Pac 
Neville, the bastard himself, is signed to All Elite Wrestling. And they basically already made a storyline out of it. He said, Pac basically said, I already have a belt. You're nothing to me. And Hank and Pac just walked. Now, Pac, he wasn't wearing any clothes. He was wearing his gear. Yeah. Which was weird to me, but he was wearing his gear, looked ripped to shreds like he always does. Starts talking shit on Hangman, but then walks away. Hangman grabs the mic and goes, if that's a challenge, I accept. And then throws it down. Which has me thinking, Linz, could the main event of Double or Nothing be Pac versus Hangman for the title? I don't know if I could handle it. That's going to be fucking insane. Insane. Absolutely crazy. I am going. I am. I am going to be all for Hangman, every step of the way. We have to get there. We we have to get there. If you, I just think it is so cool. Now you can hear it in my voice how pumped up I am for this. I just think it is so cool how much faith they have in themselves, and how much faith they have, and how everyone could already see it in Hangman Page to say, you know what. You're going to be in the main event of our first official pay per view. That's crazy. Oh my God. I love it. Yeah. I love too. it. And then the final signee for the day, anyway. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris fucking Jericho has signed with All Elite Wrestling. Yeah. Linz, this man does. Whatever he wants to do, wherever he wants to do it, he could do it on a boat, he could do it on land, he could do it in space shit, he could do it underground, who knows, who cares? Mm -hmm. And it was, like, legit. He showed up, he said he was all in on All Elite Wrestling. Fireworks going crazy from the the Jaguars football, football field. He put up a video online of him legitimately signing the contract. Yep. He, he put up his merch already. AEW is Jericho. I, I want that shirt. So do I. Absolutely. Now, the other merch that we saw, what one do you want the most? That one, because I don't... I mean, okay, Cody's is my favorite. Really? Yes, but I cannot wear Jacksonville Jaguar colors. Oh my gosh. No, listen to me, sir. <laughs> I can't. Um, that would have been like you today wearing Steelers colors, knowing that. You shut your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what it is, Ron. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're not getting any AEW merch because of the colors. Besides well, the Jericho one. Yeah, the Jericho one's fine. And then it says, I sit there and I'm like, I don't even know. Should I even be supporting this because of who the owner I have to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it got right. me all fucked up. <laughs> Your mind is just, do I like it? Yeah, I fucking like it. Should I like it? I don't know. I hate them, but I like that. Screw it. I'm going to like it anyway. Yep, that's my mind. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so they signed Jericho. Now, is Jericho going to be a full-time talent? I doubt it. But is he going to be, you know, a staple for the brand showing up, you know, a couple times a month? Yeah, I think so. Isn't who somebody told us. Or was it you that WWE removed Jericho from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what they did was the, op- the, the opening video package that you see before Ron Smackdown of like the film strips going by mm-hmm. Jericho was on one of them and somebody it's incredible what you find on the internet. Somebody went through and looked at it again. They removed him from the film and they took him and they put him in the alumni part of ww.com oh boy yeah they put him in alumni yeah i don't think they're about it (laughs) and he doesn't give one single shit and neither do i neither do i (laughs) no one cares it's gonna be absolutely incredible so let's run down here um the final list of people that are going to be doing stuff uh that are going to be involved in aew you have sema like i said chris now this is the talent sema Chris Jericho, Christopher Daniels, Cody or Cody Rhodes, L. Lindemann, Frankie Kazarian, Hangman Page, Joey Janela, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, MJF, Pac or Neville, Scorpio Sky, Takahiro Yamamura, and T-Hawk. That's the male talent. Now, Brandy already made it very clear that AEW is going to have a women's division. 
do they try to sign Tessa? Dude, I'm waiting. Oh my god, I'm like, I I don't know how to explain this to you. I feel like I'm watching the NFL draft. Okay, that's a good point. And I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting to see who they pick next. Like they're on the clock. Let's go. I'm dying. I need, I need them to take Emma with Tennille Dashwood. I need her on it. Yeah. Um. Somebody made a point and said Dana Brooke, which would be really friggin' wonderful because that poor girl. Yeah. There's so many women. And now part of me is upset that Chelsea Green signed with NXT before. Right? This. I was thinking the same thing. It's like, damn, okay. She's been there, and I think she would have done, well, whatever. She hasn't, I'm, well, let's not do that. But I, I, I to see her there instead of NXT. Yeah. I'm hoping that. I, I told you, when the rumor started, I want Tyler Breeze to go. Yeah. We got, I don't know, like, contracts or anything with him anyway. Zack Ryder should go. That's going to be the coolest part to me. The most interesting part to me about this is which WWE stars go. Yeah, and I think some few need to go. That Dana Brooke thing, I, that never crossed my mind. That would be very interesting because she is athletic and strong as fuck. And she could do well in the ring if people gave her a chance. Yeah. But he does. Yeah. But I think the number one woman in the entire world that deserves to have a, a, a huge spotlight is Tessa. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, want, I want her to go there. She's not the Impact Knockouts champion anymore. I know. <laughs> Fucking Taya Valkyrie. Anyway. Um, yeah, she could stay at Impact. Yeah, she, I don't want she, it. She, she could stay. Uh, female stars, as of right now, that are signed to AEW. Brandy Rhodes, uh, who is the chief brand officer. Uh, she's also going to be a talent. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker and Penelope Ford, who uh, showed up with uh, with Joey Janela. I think she could do it. I'm interested to see what Penelope Ford does. Because the little tidbit that we got to see of her at All In, mm-hmm. we're like, okay, she can go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's going to be cool to see. But uh, next we have some backstage personnel. We have Billy Gunn himself oh is a producer How for amazing. AEW. You have BJ Whitmer, who is a producer. Dana Massey, who is Matt Jackson's wife. She is the head of merchandise. Mm-hmm. You and you have Jeff Jones, who is another producer, and of course the owners are Sahid Khan and Tony Khan, both mm-hmm. of which are investing a shit ton of money into this. So, Linz, I want to end it with this. Oh no, 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 no! I don't want to end it with this, but I do want to talk about this. Apparently, there's also uh, negotiations for a weekly television show. I heard. And the two channels that are currently uh, in the running are TBS and TNT. That's, oh my God. That's a, that, that is the game changer to me. Yes. If they, if they can get on television and everybody who is even a little bit curious as to what this AEW is, then that, that's going to be the kicker. That's going to be, you're going to have, are they going to try to go? They already said they're going to try to do this on Tuesday night. So they're not going to have to compete with anybody because SmackDown's moving to Friday. So if they say, you know, fuck Raw, I'll just wait for Tuesday Night Dynamite, if that's what they're calling it, and watch it on TNT or TBS. Yep. I hope they get on one of them. Oh, but, but Lens, here, this is what I'm going to end this with. Where does Kenny Omega go? He's going to AEW. You think he goes to AEW? I'm 100% positive. I I think the same thing. I, if, he can't. If I'm wrong, everybody could jump. And tell me how wrong I am. Now, a question for you: If he does go to WWE, would that piss you off? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't. I don't there. It wouldn't piss me off, and it wouldn't piss me off because, well, actually, never mind. I can't say that anymore. I was about to say. The reason that it wouldn't piss me off is because I'd get to see him on TV every week. Mm-hmm. But if AEW has a TV deal, I'll still get to see him on TV every week. I just think he's 
oh my god this is gonna sound off but whatever like i care what anybody thinks i think he's too good for wwe i would almost agree like yeah yeah i get it like i expect him to go there in like five you know, do a year or two before you retire, but not now. No, he's too big. He's, yep. He's too big for WWE. He is what AEW needs if they want to say, we're here to be real contenders. Yeah. We have Kenny fucking Omega. Yeah, I mean, they have Jericho, which is huge, but you need to have Kenny. I do not think he's staying in New Japan. Everybody just left. No, he, they, he already announced he's leaving. Oh, he did? Yes. Oh, well then, yeah, no, he's definitely going to, he's not going to WWE yet. I don't don't think so either. I think he's going to AEW, but yeah, he announced uh, on Tokyo Sports, which is, I guess, like the ESPN of Japan, um, that he is leaving New Japan. That is confirmed. Oh, well then, yeah, no. My mind. Yeah. And and now that I think about it a little bit more, now that I put the P. TV deal that they could possibly be getting, I hope he goes to AEW too, because can you imagine a match between Kenny Omega and Pac? No, I can't. No, I can't because my heart would stop. My heart would stop, but we absolutely want to see it. So we hope we got a chance to run down everything for you about All Elite Wrestling. We let you know who's in charge. We let you know who's on the board. We let you know who's signed male, female, producers, owners, investors, television deals, everything along those lines. So one last thing I wanted to tell everybody. In two weeks, we are going to have our Royal Rumble Uh, prediction show as we always do we do a prediction show before a pay-per-view but the show after the royal rumble we're going to be having another super show we're going to be having myself lens tony chris and even mike (laughs) yeah and even mike so we're going to be having another super show this is after the royal rumble if you want to support the podcast in any way all you got to do is go to anchor.com forward slash turnbuckle topics go to our anchor page click support this podcast you can do it for as little as one dollar per month it's it's not that much money trust me if you want to cool if you don't you don't have to make sure that you give us a review on itunes if you don't think we deserve five stars tell us why we don't deserve five stars uh make sure you follow our instagram at turnbuckle topics make sure you subscribe to our youtube page at turnbuckle topics you'll see the same logo for everything and once again, we are looking for another contributor. It's 2019. It's a year of opportunity. So we want to present an opportunity to each and every one of you. If you think you have what it takes, if you are extremely active online, if you create entertaining wrestling content for people to see and enjoy, and if you're someone who wants to grow your own brand, your own name, hit me up. Send a DM to me. Send a DM to Lynn. Send a DM to Champions Pod or Chris Panero. So did I miss anything that you may want to say before we get off here, Lens? Nope.